Who's Sudan, Prabhu? Krishna. Unlimited respects I offer to my older brother, Brahmananda Prabhu. I met him in 1967, early 67. At the time, I was still suffering from the effects of uh, delusion resulting from too much, intox too much consciousness expanding drugs. So wandering the streets one night, I knocked, uh, had, I had uh, been going to the temple, and, but one night I was wandering the streets late at night and I knocked on the door. I wanted to try to come in and Brahmananda in his wisdom wouldn't let me in because he knew I was not in a really good frame of mind. <clears throat> About a month later though, I started coming to the temple. Uh, Brahmananda was always a s nice, strong personality, very... Uh, simple and strong and very qualified leader. He was, uh, of course, he was a college graduate and had a teaching degree and a lot of us who came were just from the hippie group, young, and so a lot of us were pretty young. Uh, So, um, what's interesting is that uh, when he, he was uh, joining, he asked the, he asked the Swami uh, if he, that he wanted to move into the temple, and Prabhupada told him, no, you should use your money, uh, you know, keep your job, and he, he explained uh, the principles of uh, use, using whatever position you're in to gradually develop Krishna consciousness. So, uh, Brahmananda Prabhu not only worked outside, but gave all of his money to support that first temple. So, I, I was sincere. At the time, I was very sincerely attracted to Krishna consciousness, but was young, without any training and discipline. So, he was, he was my leader. He was strict and forceful and I natural follow, naturally followed the authority. After about three months, uh, when the Swami was arriving back from opening the San Francisco temple, Brahmananda had me and Purushottam stay back to help prepare the feast. So when the Swami arrived, Brahmananda came upstairs and brought us downstairs and uh, introduced us to the Swami who was sitting on the dais in the New York temple. and. Uh, we were introduced to him and we, he shook our hands. So now, uh, Brahmananda arranged for me to regularly go to Sat, uh, around the corner to Satsarupa's house, who uh, Satsarupa was involved in editing. I don't know what stage he was after the original uh, tapes that were transcribed by this Neil fellow. Uh, but when I came there, I was given pages that were already typed out and had editing done on them. So then it was a f fantastic uh, engagement for me because uh, it kept me busy, kept my mind busy, and at the same time when you type you can absorb probably 50% of what you're actually typing. So So uh, that was the beginning of my career in, in, in ISKCON Press as typing, and I eventually worked on that in that 10th Street office before Swarup was what the uh, time period that Swarup was talking about. Ray Rama was there, and I used to work under Ray Rama and uh, did the typing and layout and paste up for uh, the. the beginning of uh, the books that were being published then. 
And uh, at that time, there was a little tension, as always, between like Brahmananda and Ray Rama, how much, how much time I would spend there, or, and that's always an issue in, in the temple amongst different leaders. They want a little vying, vying for their time. But I eventually spent almost all of my time on ISKCON Press and then BBT. Uh, Brahmananda used to take us out on Harinam every Friday and Saturday night. Or we'd go to the East Village. And whenever, when we returned, we would always have hot milk with banana. At the time, hot milk and banana was very standard, mashed bananas in the milk. Um, so we'd come back and have hot milk and mashed bananas and, uh, and also puffies and cukes, puffies and cucumbers. And Brahmananda and Gargamuni were, they enjoyed eating. And, uh, and whereas a lot of us were trying to be spiritual and control our senses, uh, they, they had no qualms about really enjoying prasadam. So they used to also get uh, what, what they called bricks. And the, oh yeah, okay. These bricks were eight ounce bars of Philadelphia cream cheese. <laughs> they loved their bricks. So they would cut up, everybody would get a, a little slice of these bricks and then we'd take these pieces of uh, cream cheese and push it into the puffies and cukes and eat that. It was, it was, it was something to look forward to after Harinam. Uh, at a certain, after a couple of years, I, I told Brahmananda that I wanted to get married. So he was the one who made arrangements at the time that was pretty prevalent that you somehow had arranged marriages to some degree or another. So he arranged for me to marry Kanchanbala. And uh, and I've been married for 46 years. I think that he was a little proud of that, that he had participated in, in something like that. Uh, later on when he saw me, years later, in the past six, seven years in Vrindavan. So I think he appreciated that. So at the time that I got married, I had to stop working on the press. I got a job to earn money for my future uh, householder life. And at a... Hare Krishna, Jai Maharaj. At a certain point, Srila Prabhupada mentioned, wrote me a letter and said that the press may be moving to New Vrindavan and that I wouldn't, have to necess I wouldn't have to work outside. I could work there because I wouldn't have to ha pay money for rent. So then the money that I had earned, which is a few hundred dollars from working outside, I always wanted to be a temple president, a leader, a big man. So I offered... I spoke to Brahmananda, I offered to donate this money if I could open up a temple. And of course my, my designs were that I wanted to be a temple president. Uh, so he spoke to, Brahm, he, Brahmananda spoke to Srila Prabhupada and they des decided that I would go along with Damodar Prabhu, who was certainly more uh, capable and about five at six years old, he was already married and had a, a very intelligent guy. So the both of us went to open the, this uh, Washington DC temple. Now when it was time for us to get married, it was uncertain whether Prabhupada was, would be coming to New York and, and I, we couldn't wait so we, we uh, had, had Brahmananda perform the fire sacrifice. So he was a big part of our married, married life. Now, our, our, from that point, our services took us 
apart. I didn't have a lot to do with him, except occasionally he would come through wherever, I, wherever we were, and uh, occasionally we had the, cha the chance to, offer, uh, to invite him for prashadam, which was a very scary thing. <laughs> because you didn't want to cook too little, but then you really couldn't cook too much. He seemed to be able to, uh, to eat an awful lot. So one time he came uh, for prashadam and uh, he was coming through and he, he talked us into buying. He was a very good salesperson and very um, forceful. What's the word? Uh, huh? Huh? Convincing, yeah. So he, he convinced us to purchase the three-volume set of the Srila Prabhupada Shikshamrita, which we still have. And that wasn't until the last six or seven years that I really started to develop, develop a nice, relation, sweet relationship with Brahmananda because I was quite young when I, in the first few years that we were together, and uh, I was... Not a very strong personality, a um, bit wishy-washy. Uh, so, you know, after many years of household life and learning how to be a mensch, uh, uh, I had the chance to associate with, with Brahmananda. And he was very challenging. I mean, you had, to be, you had to be on your toes. So he was trying to find out, you know, was I a Ritvik, was I a Fringy, was I into this group, was I into that group, and after some back and forth dialogue, I, I convinced, you know, I, I wasn't shaken by him, so he, he started to develop a little res real respect, and so our relationship became very sweet. He saw me as his younger brother, and then, late, le then last August, when uh, I was in India, I stopped by to visit him whenever I had a chance and especially if I was in Vrindavan, I would come visit him. And uh, his book had just come out, so for, I bought uh, his book from, his, from him. And, uh, and then Gargamuni was there. He said, do you want him to write an inscript, you know, sign your book? And I said, oh, yeah. And uh, Gargamuni said, that'll be 500 rupees. <laughs> which, I, which I paid and... I mean, and if he didn't write a really sweet inscription, I probably would have been a little bit bitter, but I had to, it, you know, what he wrote just brought tears to my eyes, so he said, he said, for Madhusudana Nadas, my, de my dear God, brother, our Swamiji put you in my care, and I th thank you for allowing, <clears throat> thank you for allowing me to serve you right from the beginning. Brahmananda Das, Srila Prabhupada's Vyas Puja Day, 2014, Vrindavan. Well, I had been in, in, very much enjoying my visits with him, hoping to get his association again this October when I heard he had gone to be with Prabhupada. I wept then. Fair. <clears throat> I wept then, and whenever I think about what I will miss about him, I, I well up with tears. It was so... <clears throat> I wept then, and whenever I think about what I will miss about him, I well up with tears. It, will, it was so sweet to be with my big brother, Big B, as we used to call him. Oh, yeah, everybody called him the Big B. <laughs> I hope to be able to follow in his large footsteps back to the intimate service of Srila Prabhupada. 